Hey, it's party time, Mom. Welcome to another episode of the Chad Prather Show in the Mothership Studio 22. Coming to you right out of Irving, Texas. Irving, Texas. I Did thought you... you were going to say coming to you live. I know that's what you thought. It's that's where I was headed. That's because you don't ever think. We're Steve. almost live. You know who Irving, Texas was named after? Mr. Irving. Washington Irving. Yeah, Mr. Irving. Do you have a clue who Washington Irving is? He's an older gentleman. <laughs> that's why I call him Mr. Irving. Yeah. That's great, man. That's fantastic. Oh, Candice, the queen of the Ethiopians. Do you see what I deal with? Do you see? I commend you. It's like doing Make-A-Wish every single day. Well, every time that I'm trying to do show prep, like looking at headlines and, and these things like that, Steve just talks to me. He just talks, talks, talks. When Natalie's in here, it's the same thing. They just talk to each other. And I'm like, do you know what we're talking about today? No, I don't. Earlier, I well, had to reprimand Steve because he kept on throwing water bottles at different distances in the studio trying to make it in the trash can. Mm -hmm. And I explained to him that it wasn't a frat house and that he needed to stop. And I walked away silently. Doesn't matter. After I made that shot. Did you see that shot? Went off the backpack into the trash. Shame I missed it. Well, it's interesting. Because I always say, Steve, I, I've got to study this stuff. i got to study this stuff. But he doesn't care because he's not the one that's on. I should make him host the show. But that's why we call him Party Foul. I read the headlines, so I made up my whole mind on the – It's know. like reading a book by its cover. I read we the article by its headline. We know that that's what you do. Right. And all you got to do is see that T-shirt you're wearing right there with your actual mug shot on it. That is your actual mugshot from 1990. It is. If, my buddy my buddy Casey Whitworth uh, had that made for me. I think he stole the picture from the Tyler County Sheriff's Department and had it made, but we're not going to tell on him for that. That is a great picture of you, Steve. Let me just tell you, I saw that, and my, my redneck radar just went off so big on that. If you're listening to this via podcast or just audio, I want you to go to YouTube so you can see this. But here's Party Foul, right? With the mullet. I like that. And you, then you don't have any sideburns because back then you didn't do that. You shaved that stuff high and tight right there above the ear, just a straight line. Straight line. And then you got some you got some etchings in there. You didn't cut some. Uh, this was 1990, and I had racing stripes. I had three on one side, and you can't see the other side, but it had two lines on the other side. You were pretty street for a dude in uh, yeah. Tyler, Texas. Yeah, that was Tyler County, Tyler, not Tyler County. Texas. Yeah, that's what I meant. That was, Tyler a, County. that was a neighboring county of my home county, but I did all my running in the woods and back roads and beer drinking, honky tonking stuff mm -hmm. over there, getting in trouble. The only thing that has changed about you is the location. That's right. That's it, 100%. Just location. I'm the same as I was then. Oh, Candace. I travel across the country with this guy. I do. I travel across the country with this cat, Mark. I just, and he's never wrong. That's the thing about Steve. He's never, ever wrong. I'll be like, Steve, we were driving last weekend. We were driving from Corpus. I said we were driving. He was driving. I was riding. We were riding from Corpus Christi back up to Tomball, Texas. And I was like, you're not going back the same way we drove down here. And you're like, nope, I'm, this is a faster way. I'm like, there's no possible way. We're going through every little town, every little cow trail, every place the wagons went through in 1800s. You were taking those. We were bouncing all the way back to Houston. I know, but that's the most boring drive, Highway 59. It now, that's Corpus. the truth. And it it took me accusing you over and over again, this was not the fastest. You just didn't want to take the boring route. Which we, was the straight shot. We got there in the same amount of time. No, we yeah, didn't. Yeah, we did. Promise. We left at 11.30, and we got there at 3.30. A two-hour and 50-minute trip took us no, to Tom three Ball and a half, Corpus almost four three and hours. And a half. It's three and a half. Really not. Three hours, 27 Everybody minutes. has a GPS on their phone, Candace. Everybody. All you got to do is look up Corpus Christi, Texas, and do directions over to Tomball, and you'll see. Yeah, and see which way it takes you. It does not take route. you through Refurio. Yeah. That day it did because of traffic. It no, goes that's what the, the way you went. Yeah. And by the way, it ain't Refugio, Texas, because that's how we spell it. It's Refurio. It's Refurio. And by God, we saw what, we saw it in all of its glory. We went through uh, like all these small towns. I liked them. East Bernard. Mm. I have a Marine Corps buddy that lives there. Works for Frito Lay. I looked for the Frito tra Lay truck, but I didn't see it. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you guys about one of our sponsors here in a second, but I'm then I'm gonna tell you another story about what else he did to me this weekend. All right, that's a party <laughs> foul, and and I, I'm gonna tell you what I realized. Okay, so but first of all, we've all got an idea of what our dream job looks like, but someone isn't just going to hand it to you. Trust me, I'm living proof of that. Odds are you'll need at least a bachelor's degree to make that dream a reality. And I know it's hard to go back to school while you're working or while you're a parent or all of these things. And that's why you'll love Ashford University. Convenient and flexible Ashford University's online bachelor's and master's degree programs allow you to learn at your own pace. You can study wherever you're most comfortable learning one course at a time. Ashford University's six-week-long courses allow you to take one course at one time. Being enrolled in one class at Ashford means you are considered a full-time student. Going back to school will open up new doors and opportunities for you and your family. I've made several career jumps before landing here at the Blaze, and let me tell you, continued education helped me do that. No standardized tests required. The SAT, GRE, GMAT, and other standardized test scores are not required for enrolling at Ashford University. Accreditation. Ashford University is fully accredited by WASC Senior College and University Commission. Get on the road to earning your degree and making your dream job a reality. Enroll right now by going to ashford.edu slash watch Chad. That's ashford.edu slash watch chad to start your degree today ashford.edu slash watch chad listen we're going to go off the rails here in a minute with some of our crazy headlines of the day but i want to remind you First of all, first of all, Ashford University, I think, don't you think you should enroll there? Nope. No? I think they should give me an honorary master's degree. Just because? Just because, have Party Foul Steve put that on there? Not mm. even, you know? Honorary, they do it for football players and all kinds of people. I see you get an honorary degree. I don't think you can do anything with it, but it looks cool. They really don't do that for football players. Who do they do that for? Nobody. What are you talking about? Every football? What? No, they Come don't. Come on, son. They really don't. Institu they, accredited institutions of higher learning do not give them honorary degrees. Uh, now, you might get an honorary doctorate okay. for something that do you've Do they do doctorates at that? I, well, but typically, yeah. Well, I don't know if that Ashford does it. No. They're a pretty legit group of people, and I don't think they're going to give you a degree, as Candice said during the break, a degree in shenanigans. Well, uh, they might. You never know. He can they get a in BS and shenanigans. Yeah, Strong I'll take a BS. BS. I'll take an honorary BS. <laughs> yeah, I think you've already got it. Maybe so. You know what you did to me over the weekend? No. Nope. So let me tell you what he did. He'll interrupt I me. I took care tell of me. you. No, 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 no. See, he's already interrupting me. What he did was he'd go eat his meals with his buddies because everywhere we went, he had buddies in town, like, you know, friends. And I appreciate them because they're my friends, too. But they, he's known them for like 30, 40 years, right, back when he was getting his mug shots done. <laughs> They were like, hey, let's go eat. Let's go to bread and blah, blah, blah. I had drive through food for every single meal over four days, Steve. I text you and you no response. I'm in bed. <laughs> so I'd get up and go eat. Uh, yeah, no. that was what happened. That's he's eating solid meals. And then, but see, because he's so narcissistic and self-centered, he, I'm like, I'm hungry. And he's like, well, I already ate. I ain't asking you if you hungry, son. But I, I, I'm hungry. I took you to Whataburger. And I'm like, I fund your life. I know. I eat drive through for every. Do you want to know, know how many hamburgers I ate? No. How many hamburgers? Uh, three. Every? No. Uh. Every freaking meal. <laughs> except for the one after the deal in Tomball where we had the taco whatever. Where, do, where was that at? You had it, crawfish this weekend, too. Well, that's because we and happened I to sat be down, at the venue. And I sat down with you and just you, nobody else, Look, no I don't friends. care about the company. Okay. I don't need, it wasn't, val well, it was Valentine's Day, but I don't but, need, it's not about the sharing of the moment together. I want just want, like last night, Candace, last night, I finally went to dinner after we got home, or the night before last, I'm sorry, got home from traveling and I ordered a salad. That salad was so good, I ordered another <laughs> salad. I was like, could you bring me something else green, please? 
That's just funny. something else. We'll see. Okay, like the other morning we were in Corpus and Carl Rice, my buddy, said, hey, let's go get breakfast. I text you, no response. We went and had breakfast. And I'm like, I love Carl, but Carl can talk. No kidding. He can out talk you nonstop. Carl's a Sorry, Carl. And um, love you, Carl. You He's needed, a handy dude, man. You, oh. need, you needed rest. Now he <laughs> came. He came out and helped out at the shows and uh, did a little bit. He ran the meet and greet while I was selling merch and that kind of he thing. Did. So I love Carl. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You know what jewels are? Jewel. She's a singer. No. Nope. Rock singer. The J U U L. The oh, jewel that you smoke. That's the smoking, yeah. I know like, that. I didn't know what it was. Well, I read the headline, time. y'all, and that's funny because I was thinking, why would Jewel run an ad on a on yeah. Nickelodeon? Because she's like bought, a singer. Yeah, Jewel bought ads mm-hmm. on Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon uh, to target kids. There's a lawsuit out about that, and, of course, they deny it, but they wanted to go out and find the hip and cool people. So, obviously, that demogra- demographic is going to be the young people who are fashionable and urban, you know, with the vibrant life. Well, you know, apparently this is the folks that are out there watching the Cartoon Network, like Johnny Bravo, or as I like to call it, the Graham Allen Show. Is that the – oh, see, the car, I was going to say the car, Cartoon Network at nighttime shows some of that Lost in Space and Johnny Bravo, and those – they have some subliminal adult humor in there. Yeah, but So, I don't they're think- targeting the adults. They're not necessarily targeting the kids. I, but see, I don't agree with you because here's what's happening. Well, who they're targeting, I can't say. But I, I like I didn't know what a jewel was. But I had one of my sons talked about coming home from middle school, and when he was in sixth grade, and he was like, "Yeah, they, these kids are getting they're smoking jewels in the uh, in a, in the bathrooms, right?" And I'm like, well, "What's a jewel? Like, am I missing out on something? Like, is there something <laughs> I need? What are you doing? They're smoking jewels. What you talking about, man?" What's this? And I still really didn't know exactly what it was, but anyway, so apparently it's kind of like what an e-cigarette type yeah. thing, but it's got something else in it. It's flavored nicotine. Okay. So it tastes like strawberries and raspberries. But see, that cool. in and of itself that ought to tell you that targets younger generation. Well, that targets kids. Well, I, I want to say it was Trump said something about outlawing flavored stuff and i might be misquoting but i I read somewhere about them outlawing the flavored stuff and they probably should now look i don't agree with government intrusion at all so if a person wants to make a product and sell it i don't think the government should have the ability to go in and regulate that and make it you know like i just don't believe in government regulations in a lot of things like that in terms of how it impacts your personal life as an adult but now, when you're talking about kids and stuff like that, that you gotta gets beat slow. their ass. Yeah, you do gotta beat that ass. But I don't mm-hmm. want the government beating my kids' ass. I, I want to beat their ass. I can remember my responsibility to beat that ass. I can remember, uh, you know, sneaking and smoking a cigarette, and had to. And I got caught, but yeah. anyway, I had to go tell my dad. Oh boy, mm. what happened? It, it wasn't pretty. What happened? It wasn't pretty. Did he take a mug shot of you? He beat my ass. Well, he, he probably beat more of my ass. But anyway, he did that. Same thing with like. Uh, uh, Copenhagen, you know the chew. Oh, and I, I know. I was co- kid. Yeah. I was. I couldn't have been like nine or ten years old, and he let me know that it was, you know, mm-hmm. it's uh. Bad we didn't for do you. the whole smoking in the boys' room thing or smoking out behind the school, but but we would dip. You know, we would dip the the Copenhagen or whatever, and I had, you know, a lot of friends got busted and stuff like that. I think from the time we were about sixteen, you know, that was the deal. You go out on the weekends with your buddy and and. You go buy a pack of cigarettes. You could buy a pack of cigarettes back then, no problem. And you go yeah. smoke it and then try to get it off your clothes and your breath before you got home. Oh, you can't it doesn't do work. That. Like, what's <laughs> funny is nowadays you get around people that have been drinking and you smell it on them. I mean, you can't hide that. You can't yeah. hide that. I can remember coming home thinking I was so sly. You know, come home about 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning, whatever your curfew was. My mom was always waiting up. You know, she went, so how was your night? But see, I could carry it off. You know, I could drink and I'd still, but I wasn't getting like crazy, crazy. But, you know, my mom played it off so smooth, like, okay, all right, yeah, she knew. <laughs> Only time she'd get on to me is when they'd wake me up for church on Sunday mornings, and you'd been sleeping in that bedroom with the door shut all night long, and so she walk in there, and it smelled like a brewery. <laughs> get up, you go going to church. It always you better quit like drinking them beers. For some reason, Party time, Mom. For some reason on those mornings, uh, you had to leave for church extra early that morning so your mom would come wake you up because mine did the same thing. She she said she always knew when I'd been out drinking because I would come in the house at night and go straight to my room. I'd <laughs> sit in there and hang out with my mom. I was buzzing pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> what you want to talk about? What you want to talk about, Mom? Uh, I just want to see how far I could go. You know who I'd like to have some vodka with is Vladimir Putin. Well, he's Russian, you 
Yeah. You want to collude with him just to have some vodka? Yeah, he scares me, though. He Why's scares that? me. If you didn't see our monologue uh, the other day when we talked about Vladimir Putin and what a true dictatorship looks like when we posed the question, is Trump a dictator, you morons who continue to say that? We were talking about Putin who, uh, you know, he, he, does, he only wants to be praised. He creates an environment where he has to be praised no matter what because people die if they don't. Um, he's former KGB, right? So there was an artist that revealed uh, a Putin superhero paintings in Turkey. Uh, they got rid of those. They got rid of those. Revealed um, uh, uh, Alexander Donskoy was he unveiled wearing? four large paintings in Turkey which were meant to portray Putin as a hero, but authorities in Istanbul quickly removed the art. Yeah. Did he have a cape? Because, I mean, can you be a superhero without a cape? Uh, yeah. None of the uh, Avengers had capes except for Thor. Yeah, that's that's different though. Well, we're talking superheroes. We're talking Batman, Superman. Aquaman's not a real superhero because he doesn't have a cape. Well, if you'll remember on The Incredibles, she said, "No capes, no oh. capes," because oh. they look good. But then he got sucked into the airplane engine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, because of his cape. His cape got pulled in there. So I don't know. I haven't seen this art because they pulled it down. You know, Super Putin. I've done some Super Putin. <laughs> yeah, Have you yeah. ever done any Super I've done Putin? Some Super Putin. We did some Super Putin in the car driving through Refugio. Yeah, probably the other so. day. And uh, I think you might have just pooped your pants. Well, as soon as you roll down your window, I go ahead and roll down my yeah, window you too. You know what's because, up. You yeah. know what's up. You know what I hate is people who. You know how some people like to smell their farts. Yeah. Like you know you know those jackasses out there that are like that. Like like I've always said that farts are like kids. You only love your own. So do, do you ever, you know, let one go and say, do you smell something burning? No. See, it makes people sniff. No. Or you say, hey, do you smell popcorn? They start sniffing automatically. Let's go, is that the brakes? <laughs> <laughs> you can't help it. You just got to it. smells like transmission it fluids right there. Yeah. But, yeah, that's some super Putin right there. Yeah. You just let it out. But I know I've known some people. Like my boy Tim Lett. Tim Lett, he'd sit in the truck like you wanted to smell it too, like he was doing you some kind of a favor. Yeah, just waiting for you to And I'm like, man, that, you eat a lot of meat, bro. Just, they're, I, they're can sm literally smell the sausage. Like over, how much meat do you eat? Sitting over there waiting for you to catch wind of it. Yeah, it's yeah. true. Hey, yeah. conservative voices are being silenced daily by left-wing tech companies who profit off exploiting your privacy and then silence your voice when you say something anything that they don't agree with more and more our most sacred right the right to speak freely has come under assault in places that were designed for us to share our opinions freely and with no other options you're forced to play by their rules until now introducing parlor parlor is the news and free speech app it will not silence your opinion or violate your privacy for financial gain simply download the app you create your account post share speak freely now can you say just anything you want to? Well, no. You can't threaten violence. You can't commit actual acts of hate. You can't harass or commit other crimes. But that's not who you are anyway, and that's not what you're going to do. So go to Parler.com or visit the App Store. Get that red app with the P in the middle to download Parler. Get it today. I'm on Parler, and you can follow me at Watch Chad. All of the Chad Prather Show podcasts are shared there every single day. That's P-A-R-L-E-R dot com or find us in the App Store. Parler, get news and speak free. You want to know who's crazy on social media. We talk about Parler and the stuff that comes our way, which is amazing to me because you're not supposed to put hate speech on there. You're not supposed to put violent speech and threats and things like that. But, I mean, just today, just today on Facebook, I posted something. You know, you talk about Trump that was at the Daytona 500 last week, and you got people who come on there and say, well, uh, you know, Trump came and the rains came, and so they, they had to postpone it. And then the guy that endorses Trump, Ryan Newman, was in a wreck, so he got karma and what he deserved. And I'm like, what? Like, what What planet do you live on that your level of ignorance is so strong 
that you're going to go onto a public forum and say something that is so unabashedly base like that. I mean, you deserve seriously for your daddy to come back and whoop your ass. That's stupid, people. I mean, it just, really is. Because you, you, I told you, they're going to blame Trump. And they did. And they did. Instantly blamed him on the rain, blamed him on the wreck. I just don't understand, though, why, what it is, and I understand psychologically how to label it, but I don't understand how people get online and become the keyboard warriors that they do, and they just, like, are you drunk? Are you high? Do you feel that need to bully in such a way that you're wishing harm on somebody else? I mean, you would never say that to another grown man. You just wouldn't do it. Not a real grown man. I was gonna say, even at my drunkest and online, I never say, I'm never hateful at anyone. Well, I've never tried to pick a fight with somebody yeah. in that I, regard. I've read texts and or Facebook posts from you know the next morning after I posted. And I was like, oh, when did I do that? Yeah, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, delete. <laughs> drunk poster. Yep. You know yeah. who else gets drunk? The cockatoos in Tasmania. The cockatoos. The cockatoos. They're poppy pillaging parrots. Yep, that's right. It's a scourge of the farmers in Tasmania. You know, they're trying to grow those poppy seeds. Well, you know, you start eating those poppy seeds, you're going to get a little loopy, right? Is that what makes, doesn't that make uh, uh, opium or here something? Here we go. Or? Here we go. <laughs> oh, did I mess you up? Opium. 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 No, I just, I was laughing with Candace. Um, but these uh, they birds, they know how to go get high. And so basically they're going to happy hour, uh, getting hopped up on the poppy. And so, so they're eating that stuff, and every day, you know, they're going around there. And uh, Is this a new thing, or has it always happened? Well, they're smart. They learn, right? They're, those, they're pretty smart well, birds. They've been on the planet for millions of years. Ah, and kiss my ass. So kiss the, my ass. So is a poppy seed. So they, it's like it's like a big new deal. Well, you know, the farmers are growing the poppy. It's oh. a big deal. Yeah, Probably cut they're, down they're, their natural food source, and now they're... Cockatoos have become the junkies of the bird world, man. Uh -huh. And then you had that Alabama dude, uh, the Alabama lawmaker, uh, fights the tough abortion laws with mandatory vasectomy bill. Speaking of that, Candace, I had somebody who commented on, we posted a Blaze article about this the other day. And this, this bill is once you reach the age of 50, you should be made... Forced to have a vasectomy, right? Which you probably need one at that point anyway. So, whatever. Yeah, but you should still have a choice. Come on, you can't make... Well, I already said I. you should have a choice. The government yeah. can't make you. That's what I said earlier about regulating and infiltrating your life. They shouldn't be allowed to do that stuff. Now, if you're in prison for child molestation and shit like that, we should be able to well, this chemically is, this castrate is you. Different sort or of however, deal. maybe a chopping block. This is a different sort of deal, but obviously, yeah. I mean, they want to, they want to, you know, they, what they're saying is we can't put all the responsibility for getting pregnant on the women. So men need to be responsible also. But what I was going to tell you is what, Candace? Say it, speak it. Where your head pops. Go ahead. Oh, yeah? Go ahead. Okay. I'm just interested. I'm trying to track your, your thinking here. So, what this lady came on and said is that boys at the age of 12 should automatically be given a vasectomy until they get old enough to make wise decisions. And once they decide they want to get married and they want to parent a child, then they can have the vasectomies <laughs> reversed. That's bullshit, too. That was her idea. That was what the lady commented. I'm like, okay, you've been eating poppy with the, par with the parents. So <laughs> that's like, that's a dumb idea. There's better ways to handle stuff like but that. But that was her way. Her her argument was that uh, there's too many there's too many people on the planet already, and so we just we just cut down on the reproduction right there. And then some some boys may never get it reversed, right? They may may not. So then you just put it all in control of the state. Now I can't reverse it myself. That so what happens if the apocalypse happens and, and all of a sudden I'm the last person there and it's left up to me and, and Heidi Klum to repopulate this planet and I can't reverse my own vasectomy? <laughs> what if it's up to me and um, um, what's, what's um, the picture for the Houston Astros wife's name? Kate Upton. Oh. What if it's up to me and Kate Upton to populate this planet? What if it's up to me and Margot Robbie 
to populate this planet, and I can't reverse my vasectomy. You're out of luck. I guess I am. And a man. But see, that's that's why this is not a good idea, man. No. You never know, Candace. You never. I have a vasectomy. How do you, how did you handle sex education with your kids? How did I handle it? Well, yeah. it wasn't sex education. I just had the talk with them. The talk. The right. talk. Did you like? Because like with my son, we're like, you know, at that certain age, and not maybe not twelve. It was probably a little bit later. But when we thought he may be headed, to, you know, it's like here's a box of condoms. Read the instructions. You got any questions? Ask. <laughs> We just handled it the way. Very sacred. Steve. No, that was yeah. very sacred. Okay, you know, you he ain't had no babies. I don't want you to. No, I want, I want you, to, you to be a little bit better than Dad was. So. Well, I told you what my dad told me. He's like, I'm, you know, it's basically a threat, <laughs> and I took it as that. Yeah, you know, I took and it then, as that. Well, see, like in the girls, and I won't talk too much about their personal stuff, but we, you know, they got a certain age. We tubal have, ligations at thirteen. No, nope. birth control implants. That way they didn't have to remember to take them and stuff IUDs. like that. And they're like, Dad, we're not even, we're not. And I'm like, okay, cool. And then once they got married, they took them out and they had babies and mm. that kind of thing. Because, you know, you put oh, you put a boy and a girl in a okay, room, they're, they're going to have sex. <laughs> no, no. no I, they're not. Yeah. They're not. You yeah. think that way. I and that's not that. true. That's why, listen, that is not true. I See, and I get so sick of people who want to come on there. They know everything. Like, everybody out there is having sex. Not everybody's perverted like you and me. No, I know that. But I just don't think, you know, just abstinence. How do you say that? Abstinence? Abst am I saying that right? Well. Abstaining from? Abstinence. I, abstinence is okay. a drink which may lead to sex. Uh, there we go. But, and I understand teaching that along with, here's a backup plan. Because abstaining doesn't work i know a lot of people who have abstained i i do too i know a lot of people who they're, have they're better people than me i understand that they are yeah yeah i understand that they are and me too and they regard. would never get on national tv and admit and that they did anything wrong and so. most of the people you know that i know i mean yeah probably they probably went against the grain but you know people who abstain from sex hey hats off to you god bless you because i think that sex Sex is has been belittled and demeaned so badly by Hollywood and our culture, everything from magazines to the internet. It's been demeaned. It's not a sacred thing anymore, right? It's I, not I agree with you on that. You know, it's not a it's not that way it was designed and it's you know, it's abused. It, but I also feel like if we make something so taboo to our children that that just strikes their interest even more. Well, I, there is some, there is an element of human nature to that, Steve. Yeah. You're right. If I keep pointing at something, you're going to look at it. Yep. Hey, this winter, start a new routine to upgrade your everyday life with a monthly box of awesome from Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post sends guys only the best stuff every month. So whether you're looking to commemorate an occasion with a champagne saber or toast perfectly aged winter cocktails, box of awesome has you covered. From style and grooming goods to barware, cooking tools, and outdoor gear, Box of Awesome has carefully built collections for every part of your life. They have this amazing travel toiletry bag filled with awesome manly products to keep your face clean and good looking. Look at this. Whoosh. To get started, take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right Box of Awesome for you. They release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. It's free to sign up, and you can skip a month or two, cancel it any time if you need to, but each box costs only $45, but it's got over $70 worth of gear inside. So get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com. Enter promo code WATCHCHAD at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com. Code WATCHCHAD for your first 20% off of your first order. Go get it. Hey everybody, welcome back. A couple more headlines we want to get to, and who knows what rabbit trail we'll take off on again. I like rabbit trails. Yeah, I know you do. You like to create them. Yep. You like to... Well, no, I get to thinking about something, and I go, hey, oh, it makes me think about something else, and yeah, before you know it. That's why you wound up in a mug shot right there that's, on that shirt. Show it to the people that are just... Look at, uh, the, look at the fabulous 
mullet on that I'm thinking party about, I'm thinking about selling them. <laughs> you gonna get some made? Yeah, I don't know what I. I don't know if I should keep the saying or change the saying, <laughs> but I want to. It, it's funny. We sell everything, folks. <laughs> yeah. We sell. I mean, everything we sell. This was a if one it ain't on, nailed down. You want one of my kids? You want a wife? Uh, I, I got one for no, you. No, we just had a guest yesterday that talked about not selling your kids. So that's uh, ah well, it's right. a different sort of thing. <laughs> Oh, man, if you need some cash, I know where they're giving it away. Uh, Chinese bank is going to destroy cash in areas hit by the coronavirus. That's right, China's central bank. It's not like, you know, you go to China, you don't have like Wells Fargo and Bank of China. <laughs> and, you know, I was going to say Bank of America. You don't have <laughs> Citibank. You don't have Three-Fifths Bank. You don't have any of those brands, you know what I mean? Why don't they just launder this money? They don't have the local credit. Well, and when I say launder, I don't mean. I know. I mean wash I, it. You mean wash machine. it. Yeah. Yeah. Because laundering money and laundering money is two very different yeah, things. Yeah, you just put a little bleach in there and launder it. Well, <laughs> even if you wash it, you're it's, because, again, paper currency is not paper per se. It's fibrous, right? And so the reason is they feel like these coronavirus. Look, I mean, it's in the air. They're. Uh, I mean, they're gonna. They're talking about a disinfection process that involves involves ultraviolet light. I but, thought their money was plastic. Chinese is is like plastic. Really? Yeah, like Canadian money. That's plastic. It's made from plastic. It's not even fibrous. I think that's. I think you're thinking of Monopoly, Steve. I think no. It's a. It's I, like a plastic. It's like a thin plastic. But Steve, you've literally been to Canada. And what was their money made out of? Uh, coins. It's coins, and then the, and the fiber. No, the, it's plastic. Oh my! I know this. I'll bring you one. I got one in my piggy. I kept a five dollar Canadian deal. So anyway, they're gonna get rid of about seven point eight billion yuan, which would be about one point one billion dollars. That's been removed from circulation in Huangdong. Uh, that's probably How would you like to live in Huangdong. People that already died. How would you like they to live in a place called Guangdong? <laughs> Guang <laughs> <laughs> Guangdong province. I ate at a Chinese restaurant called Aw Dang. Uh, I've had Vietnamese at a place called What the Fuh. <laughs> <laughs> what the Fuh. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, so there you go. You don't have to bleep that because we didn't put a hard K on it. It was a pho, like Oh, pho. thanks, Steve. I thought thanks it was for that enlightenment. my whole life, and somebody told me, no, it's pho. Yeah, so they're getting rid of it because they don't want the coronavirus to spread. Well, too late, people. Too late. You did that, China. Made in China. And then the gyms in China, they're live streaming their workout routines because – so I don't know if you've ever seen how, like, they do – Chinese exercises in their classes like they'll even a lot of times they'll take breaks and they'll put them up on you know they'll go outside and they'll all line up in their little organized thing you know like good communists do and they they'll do to... their exercises all at the same time all well, you know choreographed like, together that's talking about gyms though right or yeah but it... that's what I'm talking about that's they do their they do their routines but don't they walk and ride a bicycle everywhere in um, China not in, not in Wuhan right now oh. it's a ghost town I say, they so they don't want to go into the gym well, I mean, Lord, I don't want to go into the gym now. There's all kind of funk growing in there. Mm -hmm. You know, there's more, Candace. You'd realize that it, this is a proven fact over and over and over again. You can pull more germs out from under your fingernails right now than you can from a public toilet. That's disgusting. I know. I didn't you need can to know grow that. more stuff by swabbing under your fingernails right now than you can from, from swabbing a public toilet in a New York subway. Not that, you know, people in New York have nastier asses than the people here, but they might. They might. It's true. So, yeah. Nasty. Man, it's going to be a mess. And, you know, that's the thing that Glenn Beck talked about on his on his special. That is the thing Glenn Beck, and if you haven't seen it, you need to go back. I haven't seen it. On YouTube. Uh, you need to see it because uh, he's talking about it's not the, the mortality of this coronavirus that they're worried about or the COVID-19 what he's worried about in America, especially, is the economy because you take India, which supplies is their medicines are supplied by China. Many of our medicines are supplied by China. Many of our vaccines are supplied by China. So in India, aspirin is already it's, it's already gone to like four dollars a thing, an aspirin because you can't 
and people can't afford it. Years ago, I went, um, had some athlete's foot and ordered some stuff from India for uh, like toenail fungus and stuff like that. And it was dirt cheap. Like, you can't buy it anymore, but uh, it worked. Y'all, Mark, Candace, this is what I'm talking about. I ride around with this. Well, no, that made me think of something. What kind of foot powder did you give her? It wasn't foot. It was peels. You took them for six months. Oh, peels. It was not peel. pills. Peels. Peels. So you take them for six months, yeah. and it, it wiped it out. I ain't had athlete's foot toenail fungus since. You know that? They said yeah. it may cause liver damage, but may? I, my, li- my liver works pretty good. Have you yeah. had kids I since hope. then? Huh? Have you had kids since then, or? Uh, they gave you yeah. one. Of those, they maybe they need to start <laughs> giving those out in Alabama. No, you can you can go here and get them, but they cost like 10, 15 times the amount you get them from India. Peels. They might not be exactly the same. Might be generic. Yeah. Steve is going to end up on one of those locked up abroad episodes because somebody's going to be like, here, take this pill. And then it's going to be filled with like black tar heroin mm-hmm. that is going to be just found. So if I start acting crazy or something, just know. I took if them you all start. Pe- yeah. How can we tell? Uh, hey, how do you spell the word sell? What kind of sell? Sell, like I'm selling something. How do you spell S-E-L-L? the word sell? S-E-L-L. Okay. That bugs me. Like you, when you said peel instead of P-I-L-L, uh-huh. you think bugs of- me when people, they try to say sell like they're on Facebook and they're writing a post or whatever, and they spell it sale, S-A-L-E. Oh, it's that's S-E-L-L, some, people. That's if it's on sale. You know what the other thing that bugs me is if somebody says lose and they spell loose. Yeah. L-O-O-S-E is loose, people. It's not lose, and you, people are constantly... I know you're doing it phonetically, but don't do that, okay? And don't get the coronavirus. Here's a great idea. This is the kind of thing that you would do, Steve. This guy, 37 <laughs> years old, Ryan State, he's in Utah, Salt Lake City. Um, he is. He was releasing rodents in the hotel rooms to get free stays. So he's bringing his mice in and his hamsters. You ever seen a hamster in the wild? Think about that. You ever no, seen hamsters so. in the wild? Like, you never even see Mutual of Omaha showing hamsters in the wild. Like, are, aren't they, are they just, like, genetically created to be pets? I think so. It's probably created in China. Somewhere. Yeah. Like, they kind of look like they would be Chinese. I know. It's like guinea pigs and stuff. I always think they probably came they from China. They look like they're kind of Chinese. They, they're trying to raise some hybrid something they could eat. i never seen a guinea pig in the wild. I hadn't either. I mean, I guess maybe I've seen a gerbil, but they look like a little rat. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So this guy's releasing hamsters <laughs> and rodents at the Hyatt, you know. Hey, what's the first thing How you How do you think? get caught doing that? What do you think of when you hear the word gerbil? <laughs> Richard Gear? <laughs> Remember that rumor? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we know you're talking about putting gerbils in your butt. Yeah, his prison pocket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I heard somebody use the term prison I- pocket, and I was like, what? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I don't. I don't. Under, I don't understand. Maybe we should. We travel a lot. Hey, if anybody wants to sponsor a comedy tour, we need plane tickets and hotels. So we'd have to bring us rodents. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's amazing how much we've toured over the years and how many miles we travel, and we've never gotten. A, we pay for it out of my pocket. Yeah, it comes out of my pocket. We pay out of your pocket. Yeah, we do. And sometimes we use my card. Yeah, that, it's my card. No, it's your in your account, pocket. My card. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and so. Yeah, we've never had a hotel sponsor. So if any of you, if you Marriott or the Hyatt, shared, I don't know how y'all are connected to Holiday Inn. If you want to sponsor a comedy tour, we're good people. Yes. We're great people. we got a fantastic podcast here that Candace will make sure that it gets out. I'm a big fan of Marriott's. I'm a big fan of Marriott's. They're yes. like, I love them. But you know what? I could be taught to love Motel 6. We'll leave a light on for you. Uh, they killed a 700-pound black bear with a bow and arrow in, that set the North American record. You know where they killed it? New Jersey. See, what? People, people think New Jersey's just all city. It ain't. It ain't. That's right. A 700-pound black bear. That's right. huge. That's big. It's, well, it's, you know what it is? It's a record. It's a North American record, Steve. They've probably been feeding it for six years, getting it fat. Yeah. Probably in a high-fenced, enclosed area in New Jersey. But here come the crazies. It sparked a political firestorm. That's right, New Jersey Sierra Club. They want a total ban. That's right. Well, they've been off for 30 years. They had a hiatus, and now the black bear, black bear hunt was reintroduced to the state. Uh, but you know why? Because they take over. 
That's right. Take there over. you go. I don't like killing what? bears. It sounds like a sounds like a person down in the woods screaming, trying to die. Really, I've never yeah. killed one. There's a dude that got arrested um, in December. It was in Indiana. He got arrested. He had a tattoo on his forehead that said "Crime Pays." <laughs> yeah, bail. <laughs> <I can't. laughs> and and fines, legal fees. I I never understand why someone gets tattoos on their face. Well, he was charged with resisting law enforcement, possession of methamphetamine, and auto theft. Of course he was. So Sounds anyway, like he was featured on, on Live PD. I like that show. It's fun. Now, my buddy, Jesse, we saw him down in Corpus. He has that microphone tattooed on his face, Jesse Ivey. Yeah. And he's got tattoos all on his head. And oh, I'm he's like, got them all on his head. I'm I had like, to rub his head the other night. How can you do that? Yeah, and I, I love him. I, you know. I want to say thank you to our sponsors. It's always funny whenever I'm doing those ad reads. You know, we have the little teleprompter up there that'll let me read off the things. And then I got Steve who's stretching his legs out. I'm and he's, he's like got it I'm holding his notes up make, there. Trying to make you laugh. So I'm having to see past you. It's also funny whenever Natalie's in studio and you guys start talking to each other silently. She's sitting in that seat and you're up there at the bar and y'all are going back and forth at each other. And I can see that out of the corners of my eye. Candace. What if we just did this show, just us, just us, like y'all did it, your thing, and I just sat over here, and every now and then we had a guest, and we got rid of Natalie and Steve. See, I don't think it would be the same. It wouldn't. They bring and that the fun. is exactly what I'm going for. Candace, thank you. Don't take that, that too seriously. No, that makes me feel good. I think they bring the fun. I do have a few fans, because we were in the hotel in Corpus, and I'm down there drinking a cup of coffee with my buddy, and this uh, couple and their son from Harlingen came over and says, are you party foul Steve? And I was like, yes. So I jumped up and took photos and signed autographs and hugged them. And we sat down there for an hour visiting. So it's, uh, it's because of but this. But I think the big question there is, would they still watch the show if you weren't on 100%, it? 100%. They would still watch I think it. so, yeah. I think but they would I was too, the one that was there. Yeah. And then you came down and met them later. Now, there are plenty of people that will give me a bunch of crap because I said this and they'll say wait well just quit watching it right now if you get Steve off of here like my mom and me Cookie, <laughs> Cookie like, Von Haven Cookie Von Haven loves me Cookie Von Haven send us a message and tell us all about how she loves her some part of that sleep yep I hope she does yeah well send your messages to there's a lot going that's Steve on at watchchad there's a lot going on on this set I'm telling you people have no idea what we put up with that's why that's why I'm telling you, this is hard work. You think we don't work, we work. Candace works. Mark works. Me, I just run my mouth. Steve, he doesn't even prepare. Doesn't even care. Well, I'm just telling I you, do, I'm going to give you a five-minute segment sometime. I do care, but I, I do a lot of other things and just come on here and listen to you and talk. So it's, uh, it's when people start asking me, what do you do? And then I start, well, I do this, this, and this. And they're like, oh, my goodness. So... They think Dude, I just, is that what they say? Oh my goodness! No, they say other things. They're oh. like, "Oh my gosh, now I understand why you're around." Yeah, yeah. Well, I ain't trading you, so whatever. Good. You better just straighten no. your ass I've up. I've not been fired once this year. Straighten. Do your you know ass that I got fired up. seven times last year? Yeah, I did. I fired you a lot last year. None this year. Go to watchchad.com. Get all the fun stuff. Find us out on the road. Going to be in Elk City, Oklahoma. Going to be in Pueblo, Colorado. Going to be in Grand Junction, Colorado. We'll see you next time. Love you. God bless. Bye.